What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast, Scare Actor Appreciation Month. We uh we started with Ghost Town. Now we're gonna ho- hop over to the Boardwalk. It's in one of my favorite zones this season, if not my favorite zone this season, probably. Uh, Carn Evil, man, I'm excited to jump in. This this character this year had me like freaking out the way he can move his body, everything. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Ragdoll. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me on. Hey, no problem, brother. No problem. Uh, so it's been, first off, it, it's been two years since we had Scary Farm. Uh, we ended in 2019. 2020 mm. didn't happen. And now uh-huh. we're here in 2021. Uh, we came back full force. First and foremost, man, what was it like uh, getting out there? 2021, you know, after a year off of, of big time uh, haunts, what was it like just getting back out there and entertaining the audience? So this is this is wild. This is my first year doing a haunt. First year, and he's on streets already. Wow. Yeah. So this this was really because like I'd been wanting to do Scary Farm since I turned eighteen. I'm twenty one now. Right. Um. And so, but I've been going to school. So it, when I was eighteen, I was senior in high school, and I had to finish that. Then when I was nineteen. I had to do because I do audio engineering school. Right. And so I was doing the first year of that. It was a rigorous program. I couldn't do Scary Farm. And then when I was 20, that was 2020. Mm-hmm. And for obvious reasons, that wasn't happening. Right. And so this year was honestly just the first year I was able to do something like this. And I had no idea what to expect. And it exceeded any expectations that I could have had. Like it was, it, and I could feel it with so many of the other people. Um, cause I can't answer for myself cause I haven't done it before, but I could feel it with so many of the other actors I worked with that it felt like something was being held back and they were just boom, like Unleashed. when, oh yeah. Yeah. The storm hit, man. That, that, the, the, the first night opening night, you know, I wasn't originally going to go cause I, I didn't know what my work schedule looked like. And I got out right before haunt started. So I was like, okay, I get out at six 30, run down there, catch it up, opening a uh, ceremony. See what goes down from there, and my God, you could feel the energy, not only in the crowd of, of the audience, you know, as a guest, but you could feel the energy coming from the monsters, because it's been two years since they, you know, got got out to go and, and scare, and man, that energy was nuts, man. I, I remember me and my buddy Sammy were just talking about it left and right, like, this is going to be nuts just to see that opening ceremony, everything, and, and just to see the energy from everyone. Um, sadly, he couldn't make it opening night, but I was there opening night, so... I mean, I, I saw everything. I, I, I could feel the energy. Everyone was happy to be back. And, man, it was nuts. But Carnival, man, this year I think was the strongest year I've ever seen Carnival. And I don't know if it was because of the two years off and everybody just wanted to get out there and do it. But this is – and I'm not saying any other year was not strong, but this was probably by far the strongest they've ever been. Um, I honestly so- I honestly think that it is a mixture of, of one, the, the, the people that we had, but right. two – just the the and I got to give a shout out to the zone managers. These guys is Josh uh, was the main one and Ashley. Right. They both, but especially Josh, pushed everyone to the to the maximum of what they could do. They drew the 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 energy out of us, honestly. Right. Like and and his he he was a scare actor before he came here so he knows all about like what we go through and what we deal with uh, on a nightly basis and but he's very he's very like matter of fact he gets things done right and he got us moving like a well-oiled machine man it was it was awesome and he knew when to utilize certain parts of us like i remember on saturday night it was the very final saturday night that would decide the golden haunt award and we needed to win that award because i think we were tied with goring yeah and so he came up to me and two other clowns, and he just said, okay, you three, you're the most high-energy clowns out there. I don't care if they're old, crippled, or children. Kill them. And just that that alone made it so that that was, for the first three, four hours, I was at 10 the entire time. <laughs> like, just that motivation just pushed me. And it it really it it translated well and we won. Yeah, congratulations by the way. Uh, you're the first Carnival person I get to actually like talk to about that on on a podcast. Um, Golden mm. Haunt Award for 2021 for best scare zone of the year, man. That 
I mean, that's well deserved, man. I mean, you and Goring though were going back and forth, and I went Goring, and Goring did. I, I, I will say this: every zone this year did a phenomenal job because of the comeback year, and everybody was giving me a hundred and ten percent. I loved it. Um, but you and Goring were going back and forth, and when it came down to final decision, Carnival took home the Golden Haunt Award. So congratulations! We, we were going back and forth so many times; it was great, and yeah. and it was all in good fun. Like that was the best part. It didn't it didn't feel like we were like, oh, those freaking Goring guys are gonna steal our tro- trophy. We were <laughs> right. like, we're like, come on, let's go, let's let's have some fun competitiveness to it, yeah. and and. Uh, and you know, I was I was very happy, honestly, that they were the ones that we were fighting against, and it's their first year. Like, right. and, like and it's you know, I really it really shows it. Right. Yeah. And I've always said too that Carnival is probably uh, the hardest scare zone to work, only in the favor of there's no fog, there's no there's no dimming of lights. It's it's all bright, it's all there, and you got to be and you're you're seen all night, so there's no hiding from it or anything. You know what I mean? It is it is tricky in that way. I would say though, it 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 pushes us. I right. guess I, this is for me personally because there's nowhere to hide. There's no fog to hide behind. So I had to figure out how to be scary from twenty feet away right. when you can see me. Exactly. Which honestly, I'm glad about because I'm like you know this because and this is me and just anything in horror movies especially i love it when a horror movie isn't relying on jump scares you know right. when they can just like draw the fear out of you from a while away the slow burner type of thing so it's kind of like slow burner like but in real life exactly and 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 you know what not and goring 20 is the same way this year they didn't have a lot to hide in they had really nothing to hide in and they were all out in the open just like you guys. So this is why it was a fun competition to see every weekend who was going to get um, Scare Zone of the Night. And um, I had a, I had a person, uh, a buddy who worked who would always send me the results. And it was just really cool to see that, just to see the competition um, go back and forth between you two. I mean, I was always uh, tallying up, and it was always neck and neck. Like one week in Goring 20s would take it, then the next week in Carnival mm-hmm. would take it. You know, like it was really cool to mm-hmm. see that. And it makes me happy when I get to see stuff like that, because that means everyone's trying to push to get that spot and that position. And it mm-hmm. makes the haunt even more fun because then you get to see the actual results, uh, out in the, you know, in the streets, which is really cool. Even in the mazes too, like the mazes this year were phenomenal. The casting killed it. Everything this year at not scary farm was just a fun time. I, I, there was oh, like yeah. not, nothing for me to complain about. Oh yeah. It was great. I, I, I went, um, on one of my nights off, I went to scary farm as a guest and it was so fun to just go through all the zones and I went through all the mazes and it was just so great to see everyone just killing it in the zone. And I'm, I'm one of those people who like this stuff doesn't scare me, especially right. when I'm, when I work alongside of it, like it, for me, I'm just going through these mazes and scare zones. Like this is awesome. Yeah. Like that's why wax works is my favorite maze because it's like the most messed up art project you've ever seen and i am all about it <laughs> right waxworks is great i mean the final year for paranormal we can't forget i mean that was a oh, yeah. phenomenal uh phenomenal maze that was ahead mm-hmm. of its time when it came out you know that i don't think anything like that has been done with the technology and everything used in it um, great stuff you know origins the telling the story of, of just overall the, the the witch and ghost town and everything straight love and the new, to ghost town and the new maze mesmer mesmer dude that was i think what stole the the show this year for me dude i was second favorite second favorite maze for me personally the dude. The, the design was uh, oh chef's kiss man yes i i want to know what kind of drugs that that creator was on when he made that maze because <laughs> I He's walked through some of there. that no-no snow. Yeah, for real. Like, you know, <laughs> what acid was he on or something, man? Because when I walked through that maze, I was like, someone had to be tripping on something when they were on this maze. Oh, uh, yeah, it's great. But it's it's a great maze. But, man, let's talk about – Um, let's go back a little bit. Let's talk about mm-hmm. uh, what, what was – now, you mentioned going as a guest. Uh, how long mm-hmm. have you been going as a guest for before you started working? Okay, I have o- – okay, so before I started working, I had only been there once. Ooh, and it- that was the one time where we were like, I want to do this. Seriously, it happened in 2017, I believe. I went with my dad and uh, some family friends, and I was, and I remember going to all the places and being like, "Oh, this is really cool." The one place I remember very vividly going to Carnival, and I just remember going there, sitting down on the on the uh, on the flower areas or in in certain areas, and sitting there with my plate of funnel cake mm-hmm. and just. 
and eating it and just watching the clowns harass people. And I remember vividly this one moment where I saw this one girl curled up against the gate and there were like four clowns around her. And at first I thought, oh, they're, they're like helping her up. And they're just like, oh, it's so good. No, all four of them were harassing her like crazy. And I was like, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now fast forward to 2021 and you're that person that is doing that to people now. I on it, it was such a, it was such an amazing experience to to like cuz like I went through the audition process and this year they did it online cuz right. of covid and stuff like that they didn't want to have people and, and this was in like July. Right. And so um so we um when I auditioned I was super nervous. I had I had had the character of Ragdoll in mind for a while. Um, and I hadn't quite, but I hadn't like figured out exactly what it was. It was a rudimentary idea. Right. Um, but I knew kind of what I wanted to do. And so I auditioned and I just did the best I could. And I was like, okay, well, I hope they like it. And then I hear back from them later saying, okay, uh, we'll have you in person for, for an in-person, th- uh, uh, interview. And I was like, all right, great. So I go there wearing my black Dahlia t-shirt mm-hmm. and, and, uh, and, and I'm just like, okay. Oh, I'm going to figure out what, what they want from me now. And they offered me a job on, they said, you want to go on a, on the streets? I was like, yes. And they're like, you know what we're offering you? And I was like, boardwalk, boardwalk. And I was like, yeah, yes, that's exactly where I wanted to go. Right. That and That is a kid's dream come true right there, man. Seriously, that, I was... That's... I was ecstatic and just like, oh, thank God. This is, this is, this is my dream. And then realization hit me of exactly what i'm getting myself into and i'm right. like oh okay i might i might have i might i might be uh <laughs> might be throwing myself into the deep end here let's hope i can swim right no i mean listen man if you want to if you want to hear a guest point of view of how you did this year man what was the first thing i told you when i met you what it was thing? one of the first things i believe it was what the fuck is up with your ankles <laughs> First thing I said, and this is his specialty, what got him through a lot of this season and, and just the way he bends his body and whatnot, but he does this thing where he like twists his ankles in and is like walking on it. And I was like, me having PTSD from breaking an ankle, I was just like, what the fuck are you doing, dude? How is this possible? Like, it was always funny to see your reaction. I would, cause I would look out for you and, and I would be sure to do that in front of you because I knew I would get that reaction. Maybe just time. feel uncomfortable, man. <laughs> but I think that's what that is, is a great scare tactic as to what, I mean, you go through that zone. A lot of people are already scared of clowns, but if you can make them feel uncomfortable as well, on top of already being scared of clowns, that's just a double work in your favor. You know what I mean? It's, it's so funny too. This just shows you how, how random, things can be and how things can just work out i came up with that bit the night before the dress rehearsal i did it in the mirror i looked at myself in the mirror and i was like this is the stupidest thing i've ever done like (laughs) what and then i go down to my parents and i'm just like and and i'm like hey what do you think of this and they were like oh that's good i was like shut up (laughs) And, and then I do it on the dress rehearsal, just like, okay, let's just try this. And people were like, what the fuck is up with the ankles? I'm like, well, I am definitely doing that more. And, yeah. now it's, and now it's what I'm known for. And now it's a staple of your character. Yeah. You can never escape it no matter where oh, you yeah. go. <laughs> it's coming with you. It's following you. But no, it, it's something that really made me feel like uncomfortable. But at the same time, I was like, this can work for him. This is going to be something that's going to catch him off catch a lot of guests off guard this season if they pay attention at the right time and it's funny because i don't i don't even think it can be done in many other scare zones or mazes because of the lighting like i even it's hard doing it in carnival in the dark zones because people aren't looking at your ankles so i only do it in zones that are lit up and that's the only place where it works so ironically i don't really think it would work in a place like the hollows or 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 ghost town or something like that so uh like it's it's kind of funny just how it all worked together it 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 worked trust me it worked for me at least for me it did (laughs) Uh, i bet you got a lot of people with that too um so going into this 21 2021 season um you know obviously we're still in a pandemic and whatnot but Mm -hmm. it, it was still it just felt felt normal again you know what i mean and yeah uh it felt great seeing everyone again a couple of uh 
some of my friends got to play over in Carnival this year. How was it like uh, getting to interact with uh, both veterans of the zone and people who are first years just like you? It was great, honestly. I loved um, get, getting to know people, all the people in my zone and the people who were outside of my zone. Like, um, they, they were, that was another thing I was looking forward to and was utterly like blown away by. Like, cause I, I, I knew I was like, oh, I'm look forward to making some friends, but I was not prepared for just how nice and welcoming these people would be for, for a new guy like me, who's never done this before. And they, they welcomed me in on the first day and I started making some friends like, like Candyman was the first person to, to compliment me on my character. He dropped me a message out of nowhere and just, and before I even, even met him or knew who he was. And he just said, Hey, I really like what you're doing. And I was like, thank you, man. <laughs> like, and, and so just this stuff just, just really caught me off guard. I was, I was honestly overwhelmed by, by just, the the welcoming and warm attitude that was given to me by the people uh, that I work with, and then it was just so fun to just hit the streets with them and get some get some freaking work done, right? And 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 just have these moments that like that we can that we can look back on and just be like, whoa, this is so much fun, like and, and just stupid silly moments. Like every time I would do my death drop in front, you know, Rabbit, right? The, yeah. the dude who goes around the unicycle. Every time I would do my death drop in front of him, he would go, he's finally dead. And, <laughs> and, and I, and, and, and then I would get up and be like, oh, yeah. And so just, just funny, stupid stuff like that, which just makes the night for me, man. And like, it's, it, it, I was honestly just blown away. Yeah. Really I mean, was. like I said, a bunch of new faces coming in this year. Um, Obviously, with uh, Queen Mary's Dark Harbor not happening oh, yeah. this year, a lot of them went over to Not Scary Farm to play, and uh, a lot Those of dudes crushed it. Pretty much all, seriously. yeah, pretty much all of them were on Carnival, just about. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was cool to, that you got to interact with a lot of them because they've been doing a lot of stuff over at Dark Harbor that is very impressive. And now you get to come over here for your first year, you get to hang out with them, see what yeah, they, they like. They translated like so well, like it, it was, it was so cool to just see these guys just kind of come in and just, and they kind of, some of them voiced to me that they were feeling a little bit like, oh, I don't really know. And then they just hit the streets and bam, just, just started killing it immediately. Like, and, and found, found, found something that worked for them and just made it work. And it was right. just really cool. Right. So that being said, man, um, obviously you know, you had what worked with you with the uh, the ankles, the the falling, the way you moved mm -hmm. your body and stuff. What was some of the your favorite scares that you got this season on on guests? Obviously, uh, freaking them out or whatnot. Okay, so so there's there's a lot of fun stuff. Um, um, I can I I can't remember a bunch of specifics, but I can remember just instances where this would happen. Like like it's always fun to see people just react. I, I say this all the time. I love it when I can scare people, but I really love it when I can make someone just utterly disgusted by me, <laughs> like just something like if I do my ankle bit or if I just bend over backwards at something and I hear someone go <gasps> like, <laughs> like that's, that's almost better. Like, right. cause, cause, cause I, I made someone just grossed out <laughs> and, and that's just funny to me. <laughs> um, but, um, I can remember, um, I love it when, when I started implementing my crab walk thing because that, another staple I, I love I lovingly call that move parting the Red Sea because that's exactly what it does <laughs> um, and and um I remember one scare that happened in the last week that that was funny and fun at the same time just because of of how um I actually I'll talk about two one was when I scared this this girl um and she ran and she hid by a bench and I came and I sat down next to her and just, and she wasn't moving. She was just shaking and like just crying a little bit. <laughs> and, and she was like middle schooler and I hate middle schoolers now, so I don't care. Right. Um, and so, um, uh, and so I'm just sitting there and I start mimicking her shaking and just, just right next to her. And she's not moving and I'm not moving <laughs> and I'm not saying a word. And then I see her, her, her knee is like shaking really bad. And I just turn to her and I just go, 
stop shaking your knee and she, <laughs> and she like tries to hold it but she can't and I, I just start getting more aggressive towards like for some reason just the fact that her knee is shaking is just pissing me off even more and more <laughs> and, and it, it was just and it's funny and their friends come over and you're just like you're being mean and I'm just like nodding my head at them. I'm like yeah, <laughs> yeah it's uh, um, kind of my job <laughs> yeah um yeah so there's there's a bunch of instances like that um and uh th there was one <laughs> this is actually funny you'll like this um there was one girl who came up to me when i was doing my broken ankle bit and uh she looked at me she's like oh what is that i'm sorry i don't want to be rude unless you in case you actually have muscle dys dysmorphia and i was just like what <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> caught me off guard i was like oh Okay, thank you. I'm still gonna scare you, but like whatever. <laughs> oh man, yeah. No, it, it's it's like I said. I I would sit there hours within hours upon each night that I went, just watching everyone in Carnival. Uh, it, it was honestly one of the best times I've ever had because it, it's a it's a zone that you know is gonna get easy scares because of pe the phobia of clowns. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you're like looking to see how creative can they get with said scares and i sell so much creativity in that zone yeah it's... i do love the creativity that that we bring and i think that what's nice about carnival is that and, and i think a lot of people will agree it's such we have such a creative like a wide creativity like like array of things that we can do because we can be scary but we can also be goofy as hell yeah and 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 like i i love seeing stuff like that and i love having that creative freedom um to like like just be scuttling and breaking myself open and just stuff like that at people one second and then like going over to the map pretending like i'm trying to figure out where i'm going yeah and while a guest is trying to figure out where they're going and just being like oh, really no one I'm, I'm going. <laughs> and, like, that was one of my favorite bits to do because everyone would just be like what the heck is this guy doing yeah and and you know it's fun yeah now and, and so which brings me into my next question um we know you have amazing scare tactics towards guests. What was your favorite moments working with um, your fellow monsters on Carnival? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you guys are, uh, it's famous for Carnival to go with other monsters and just and play out bits and just have a good time while they're out there. What was some of your favorite moments with other with your other coworkers that you, you pulled off? Well, there was a bunch of them. Um, there were bits that would be developed. Um, there, there. I'll, I'll name a few. One was like with Teddy. Every time I would see him, I would pet him on the head and her. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, uh, every time, um, every time I like I mentioned with the drop. Every time Rabbit would see, he'd be like, "He's dead. He's finally dead." Yeah. Um, there was one thing where um, uh, I would have this guy Rampage. Uh, yes. He goes around with a giant mallet. You probably see me do this, where he would pull me to the side and then just whack me on the top of the head <laughs> and then i would drop and uh we'd do that in front of people and they'd freak out because they'd be like what the hell <laughs> and uh that's always fun um and i also love the dance party that we do we would do that was that was a new thing that started this year and um that's always fun because eventually like i was the only one going over there and i would have to like drag people over there just like come on we're doing this come on <laughs> We've already committed this far. We can't. We can't give up now. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because eventually people would be like, "All right, it's a dance party. I'm kind of over it." I'm like, "No, you're not. Get over here." <laughs> exactly. No, I, I remember catching a couple of those because right at the uh, Calico stage they had uh, bands this year, and mm -hmm. I remember catching a couple of times when when you guys were over there just rocking out, you know, getting the hi crowd hyped up. It was a lot of fun to see that. Oh yeah, it was great. A lot of fun. Um, now. This easily uh, was also a very emotional season for some people because obviously the return of haunts. A lot of people like doing this mm -hmm. Die Hard. Um, we talked about you, how you were starting up and how you felt. What was it like going towards the end and just kind of like, oh, shit, this is almost over? Like, damn. It was it's funny because like people are asking me a lot about like uh, post haunt depression and stuff like that and honestly i'm not depressed i'm looking forward to next year right like because it, it's funny for me because like i mean you saw the stuff i was doing out there i am exhausted yeah like it, it it's honestly like in the last few weeks and and my in the last few days i was running on fumes man like because because it, it was it was getting to the point where i was like oh my gosh 
oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> I was still loving what I was doing, but I was getting really tired and just exhausted and just kind of starting to burn out a little bit. Um, but I was still kind of pushing myself. And so um, it's kind of nice to have an extended break as the w- months and weeks probably go on. It's probably going to get a little bit like, I miss it. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I'm, I'm, it doesn't really feel too much like it's gone completely just because I'm still interacting with the, with the friends that I made. I'm still right. interacting with my crew and my cast and everything. It's, and so it's, it's basically like, we're just going to take a little break and we're coming back and we're going to be even better than ever. Yeah. Speaking of breaks, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to show you some footage of what Ragdoll was like on the streets and talk to him more (laughs) about his haunt season. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, and that was Ragdoll right there on the Carn Evil Streets, man. I mean, those clips right there that I that I showed of you, man. I mean, right there proves how energetic you are. And we were just talking about this right before we started rolling of how energetic you were going into obviously week one and continuing to have that same energy by week fucking four and five and six and all that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, <laughs> what was it like uh, energy wise? What what was something that gets you pumped up every night, man? Did you did you listen to music? Did you did you hype I did. yourself up? I did listen to music. I had an album that I would play all the time. I would play Slipknot's Iowa on great on great a choice. roll on a roll because that album literally the entire album is basically just him saying I hate everyone I want to kill you and <laughs> and and so I'm like dude this is my this is my hype up music so I'd, I'd be in the back just like putting on my makeup just be like, Girl, John. just <laughs> just getting getting in the zone of wanting to rip someone's head off as I'm listening to disaster piece or listening to people equal shit and then I'd usually end it by doing my stretches while listening to Iowa which is just madness entirely just oh, the, yeah. the creepy vibe and just everything and 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 it was it was always cool um and I would and I would bring my speaker um uh, a little a little uh, JBL speaker right here and I would I would just crank it and just be in the back and and I could tell a bunch of people were like at some point they'd be watching me and I'd be like doing it and they wouldn't talk to me when I'm doing this. <laughs> I know a handful of people though that would have probably enjoyed the music, honestly. Oh that yeah, worked they, in that zone. A, a few of them do, but they 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 would they would they wouldn't talk to me just because they'd be like, oh, this guy, what the hell is he doing? It's on a I'm whole other like, level. <laughs> I'm getting in the character. Not <laughs> uh, now, obviously, Knotts is known for the birthplace of uh, sliding. Is mm-hmm. that something you're interested in incorporating into your character in the future, or you think uh, you're like, no, nah, I think I could, I could think of deal would do without sliding. Now, this is interesting because I've thought about it. I have, and and originally, I I really did. I was like, yeah, sure, let's do sliding. That sounds like fun. And then as I started to go on, I was thinking to myself is ragdoll a slider like is that some is, is that something i could see my character based on his movements and everything doing and i'm not entirely sure i'm gonna like try sliding because i've never slid before in right. my life i'm gonna give it a try and just try some stuff and see if if i can make it work but honestly it's like like there's a reason the candy man doesn't slide mm-hmm. like it just it, it wouldn't work it just right. doesn't it, it doesn't really fit um but like someone like like death or 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 hostile like they're they're sliders because it works um and so you know I'll, I'll i'll test it out i'll see what i can do i'll see if it works but if it if it gets in the way of what i think i can do as a character then i then i won't do it yeah so it's, it's one of those things where it's in the back of your mind it's a possibility but it's not for sure it's like you you could do without it and you could do strongly without it Mm -hmm. yeah i mean like i didn't slide at all this this year and i feel like like i i wasn't i wasn't hindered by it right and i respect that man because i think it's uh it's not no offense to sliders because sliding is also a very hard thing to do on your body and everything if you're Mm -hmm. not trained properly if you're not you know in the right mindset or um you know not in the right health for it but it, you know, without sliding, I think it, it makes your not only your job a little bit more creative because now you got to figure out, OK, how am I going to get the scare without sliding, without gloves, without uh, how am I going to get a scare 
just using my body, just using the movements that I know that I can mm-hmm. use. And I respect the hell out of people who can go out there and do that because that's way, in my opinion, way harder to try to accomplish. And that was another thing. I was just like, I have my crab walk. Like, like I could slide or I could do something that seems to like really freak the hell out because there are sliders everywhere yeah. in Carnival. I don't know one person who does crab walking in Carnival. Right. Like, and so, so if it, 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 and that was another thing. If I, if, if, wearing the slider gear hinders my ability to do the crab walk i'm not gonna do it yeah no and and that's a lot of respect for you right there man because you see you have your own kind of um gimmick going with that where that is you that is who ragdoll is and i i like seeing that i mean it's like i said i like to see how creative people can get uh scaring it's it's one of the best things about going to a haunt it's one of the best things about just seeing everyone how creative they can go because you'll see different things at different haunts every year uh, mm-hmm. someone knows how to innovate something differently and, and use their own techniques and tactics, then by all means go for it. Cause I want to see what you guys can do. And it was a pleasure watching you this season. Cause it was just seeing that. Yeah. Know, thanks right? man. Yeah. It, it was, it was, it was funny crafting this guy because like, I, I wasn't really, my, my mentality was like, okay, so there's contortionism and stuff like that used in all the time. Like you see that everywhere. You go to like Carnival and, or Ghost Town, you see people do the back bends and you see people, there's a guy in Hollows who does crab walks. Like, like this stuff, this, a lot of the stuff that I do, I, I like get from inspiration from other people. Um, and so I thought, okay, contortionism is used in, in a lot of scares. What if I had a character who that was his thing? Like he was a contortionist and I thought, okay, I, I don't know if that's been done before in, in Carnival. Maybe, maybe it has, maybe it hasn't like, let's just see what I can do. And people, I was honestly just blown away and overwhelmed by people's response to it. It, it, it was, I did not expect the, such a positive response, especially on the first year. You're secretly tying your character into Mesmer unofficially (laughs) secretly fitting into that that world right there too man i like it i like it it's unofficial but i like it (laughs) my 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 character's backstory is is rooted in 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 a few places i i tied him in with a few characters from carnival just for fun like because i uh i thought it would be an interesting uh idea to because especially when i found out like people like when they created their backstory they like incorporated it in like interweaved it with other people i was like oh that's brilliant yep yeah i i see that a lot with uh ghost town and i also mm-hmm. see that a lot with uh with carnival too a lot of people will tie into other people and everything even even to the point where some people even get confused by calling one monster another. Uh, <laughs> I, I heard that a couple times, which is hilarious, but yeah. that that's really cool, man. I'm glad you got to uh, kind of Frankenstein your own monster and, and kind of bring it to life. You're, uh, you, like many other people at Haunt, are now a Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun to do that. I, 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 I had a lot of fun, like, like putting creative effort into, like, into this thing and i was like this is mine this is something that i can create and and mold and still continue to work on for years to come yeah and uh and it's it was it was the best part about the whole experience now not giving too much away because i know a lot of secrecy with uh with this comes around but uh for ragdoll year two uh you already got plans on what you want to do. You already want to, you got plans of coming back. Uh, what, let the, let the audience know, or will we see ragdoll in 2022? You will see ragdoll next year. I'm going back to carnival. That's happening. Like yes. I, I don't, I don't care if it's a rehire or an audition, I will be back. And, and I, I have ideas already on what I want to do as far as the look goes. Uh, I'm not sure like what's going to happen in in that because apparently carnival could be going over some new looks which like like spoiler i don't know i don't know anything about it but um but i that's what i've heard and so um i'm interested to see how that ends up going but i have some ideas for stylistically given given the backstory of my character how i want to how i kind of want him to look and i'm i'm hoping that that could be um that'll be approved next year. I'm looking forward to it. Nice, man. I mean, I, I'm glad to see that you're already thinking about that for next year. And, and you're the type of person that was saying, 
you know, why is everybody getting sad? Because I'm ready for next year. Like, I'm, I'm already getting oh, yeah. pumped, and the energy is there, man. So mm -hmm. that's cool that you'll be coming back, hopefully, for 2022, and we'll get to see you out there again and uh, have a great time. Um, so for any people that want to join Haunt as a first time, like much like yourself, what advice would you give them for uh, auditions and, and whatnot and, and, and pretty much kind of conquer that nervousness of going in? Have a character in mind, like, or if not a character, have a shtick or something that makes you memorable because people, they're looking for something, something new, something they haven't seen before. They want to see something like that, that could be, be really interesting. If you, if you, and know where you want to go, like that's a, that's an important thing. Know exactly where you want to be and what you want to do. The clearer the image in your mind is, the better you'll have. That's for, for audition. And also don't, don't be afraid to just go for it. Like, just be weird, be freaky. It, it doesn't matter. Like you're, you're going to look like a fool, but everyone looks like a fool. It's going to be fine. Um, that's for auditions. If once you get there, um, be prepared for some idiots, like some real grade A jackass guests. Like it, it happens all the time. And like, it, it really like within the first week I had such a burning hatred for middle schoolers. Like it, it it's like, oh yeah. my gosh, dude. even as a guest, like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. So yeah, it, it, it's, it, you have to have thick skin and you have to like it for me, like that. It, it was it was kind of hard because like I had like a great this is gonna be great we're gonna go out there we're gonna scare people it's gonna be fun and then these people come in and start ruin ruining the vibe and I'm just like what the hell dude and so you know I I was bitching for the first like three or four weeks and then I was like okay this is what it is get get with the program yeah. like it, I, I learned to deal with it and they and and they stopped bugging me like as much as as it as it used to. Um, and, and it was, it was almost to the point where like, I hardly noticed them because I was just like, okay, I'm not going to give you the time of day. And if I do, I'm going to roast the hell out of you and make you feel like an asshole. Mm -hmm. And so like, just like, don't, don't mess with me, dude. I will be vicious. And I have been vicious. It's been, <laughs> there are things I have said out there that I will never repeat to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, so to kind of. Uh, wrap this up man because you uh, honestly have been uh, easily one of my favorites this year because of things you could do with your body and, and just how you tell sell the story and whatnot. thanks man um, to all my guests first time that ever come on the show I always ask them the question because you know I've had some surprising answers on this uh, what is your favorite scary movie my favorite scary movie is The Thing 1982 <sighs> No, just no hesitation. I love it. Oh, yeah. I got the uh, poster in the back right over there. Posters in the back. Yeah. You guys can't see it. Obviously, we're keeping Ragdoll's uh, identity anonymous because uh, he wants to keep that kayfabe. So you don't know who he is until he's <laughs> ready to reveal who he is. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, much respect to that. So the thing, that's a, that's a good choice, man. I'm a huge yeah. John Carpenter fan myself. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Great, great film. Uh, the, the, the reason I love it is a few reasons. One, the plot is just very well done. Beautiful. It is very well crafted from beginning to end. The characters are very well thought out. They're not making idiot decisions simply to, to let, the, let the plot continue. These are all rational people making rational decisions. And it's still like an entertaining and scary story. And then as far as just, of course, anyone who's watched the thing knows this, the practical effects, my guy, is yep. just chef's kiss. Yep. It was like some, some dude from like this kid from somewhere who just made all of these stuff. And, and all the creative ways they would do it, like the, the, the chest press scene where, where, um, where he does the defibrillator and then the stomach opens up and the guy's arms get bitten off. The guy who, whose arms get bitten off is an actual amputee who doesn't have arms. So he just gets these fake arms bitten off and he waves his stumps around. <laughs> Isn't that cool, man, when you can use that to your advantage? It's it's great stuff, man. Yeah. Like like you, the creativity of that movie was great, and also Kurt Russell in his <sighs> prime. Kurt just Russell that, is just a fantastic actor, all the way rocking around. every single thing about it, rocking the look of the, with the with the everything. I've said this before. I am confident enough in my sexuality to say that that is a good looking man, beautiful man, <laughs> right there. Even to this day, man. I mean, to look at some day. of his iconic roles, man. 
Freaking uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Great film. Um, mm -hmm. You got Tombstone. freaking Tombstone, man. Tombstone is such an iconic film. Not to Watched mention that last week, man, for the for the for the uh, fourth time, I believe. Escape from oh, New yeah. York, Escape from L.A., man. Mm -hmm. Great films. Not to mention oh, yeah. his role in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, who we, Ooh, we have yeah. seen reprise on What If, which is great. Hateful Eight. Yep. Hateful Eight. Great. Any you know, uh, if you if you if you're really into Quentin Tarantino, Death Proof, another great mm. movie that he's in. Um, but Kurt Russell, man, I mean, that guy is phenomenal at anything he. he puts yeah. on so i will i, I will say that. too the with horror movies a lot of people i i say this too my favorite modern day horror movie is us got the us, poster in the back us there too messed me up after i went to see it um but yeah it, it's one of those movies where you you watch it and you start thinking to yourself what if that's mm. really going on right now oh yeah you know what i mean so yeah it, that good answers man i gotta say my favorite carpenter movie though i have to go with uh they live man they live was I have yet out. to see that. There are a lot of movies. There are a lot of movies I have yet to see. It was only until this this month that uh, in October that I saw um, Psycho, The Fly, and Candyman. So it, all great the, films. The, orig the original Candyman, Candyman not the yeah. remake. I haven't seen that yet. Yes, Fly and Psycho though, those are classics. Uh, you got Jeff mm -hmm. Goldblum, um, freaking Psycho Man, Alfred Hitchcock, classic right there, man. That's great the stuff, uh, man. original Scream Queen. Jamie Lee Curtis's mom is in that uh, movie. And that's mm -hmm. great. So you got to love that. Ragdoll, it has been an absolute pleasure watching you out on the streets, interviewing you today. Uh, and hopefully we get to see more of you and keep in contact because uh, you're a great, you're a great guy, man. If anyone wants to go follow your, uh, your character's page, what is your character's Instagram name? Uh, my character's Instagram name is BS for Boardwalk Streets underscore Ragdoll. There it and is right there. That's that's a, that's as easy as it gets. Easy as it gets right there. And from there, you'll probably find all the other Boardwalk Street accounts because literally oh, yeah. it's under the uh, recommended and whatnot. But go give him a follow. Keep up what he's doing with his character. You'll see a lot of photos from him over the season. And mm -hmm. he'll probably be uh, dropping little hints here and there leading up to 2022. Who knows? There is. I will say there is something I will be working on from now, he, from, from this point on to next haunt. It involves the re the reveal of my backstory because Ooh. I wanted to I want to I I want to explain it and express it in a fun and creative way. So I will be I will be dropping things here and there. So be on the lookout. It's uh I think it's gonna be fun. And you got ten months to do it, man. Ten months, exactly. plenty of time, man. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. So go ahead and follow him. Keep up to date what he's doing. But until then, we want to again thank every monster and thank ragdoll as well for doing what they do this season this is why we do character appreciation month because we want to simply give a platform for all these monsters to come on and just tell their story tell how they were feeling nerves wise uh especially ragdoll being a first timer out on streets that is hella impressive so we got to hear from him as well we got a lot more coming your way this month of november and we are happy to do so we're happy to get the word out there for all these talented people um, and we're happy to provide that platform, whether you know of us, whether you don't know of us, whether you like us or don't. I mean, this isn't about us. This is about the monsters who bring it all to life. Not to mention a huge shout out to everyone behind the scenes as well. The makeup artists, the costume designers, the, um, the lighting crew, the sound crew, the build crew, uh, managers, everybody behind the scenes that help bring this to life. The monsters are the one that just you see out on the stage and they really bring the whole world to life and they're the final 100, piece of the puzzle. 100%. These guys who work on the mazes and work on the designs, they start working in freaking February and yeah. they work until they work until it's ready. Yep. It's, it's insane the the behind the scenes stuff and uh it, it's it's such a it's such amazing work done i mean you just, you walk through the mazes you see what it looks like and you see the amount of work and talent that was put into it so definitely big props to them from start to finish not one black wall or nice you should take some notes oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, with all that being said we love each and every one of you we can't wait to interview more monsters out there uh but until then I'm Anthony from the Knights of Horror. You are watching the Knights of Horror YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. Until then, uh, make sure you're subscribed. The bell notification be where every time we put up a new video because you're not going to want to miss these interviews, man. We have a lot more from other haunts, not more from not, a lot more coming out. Some HHN, Hayride, who knows? Uh, we're going to be everywhere talking to everyone. We love each and every one of you. You guys stay safe out there, and we'll see you guys in the fog.